Welcome back to Lessons in Logic. In this video we're going to look at two strategies, one that is human created and one that was created by AI. Both strategies should be taken as training material and not fit for use in a live environment without further research and refinement. The aim is to see which one performed better in backtesting and also with live matches in a virtual trading session. If you would like to purchase CGM Bet, you can now do so from our own link. This will get you 25% off the current price. Just go to the link on the screen and also in the description of this video to make your purchase and join many other users of this excellent betting and trading tool. The first strategy is one that I created based on something that Peter Webb has often mentioned. This is where the strong home favourite doesn't always score the first goal of the game. This has resonated with me for a while and recently this has shown to be true on more than one occasion. We've seen both Ipswich and Fulham take the early lead away from home against Manchester City and also Southampton took the lead at Arsenal recently. In all three of these games the stronger home team came back to win the game. What my made up strategy aims to do is to bat the home team once they go a goal down and then cash out once they equalise. Of course if they concede the next goal we're looking at a substantial loss but we are playing on the fact that the home team are extremely likely to score the second goal of the game if they're losing. As usual we are going to use CGM Bet to do our analysis and game selection. This is going to be a simple strategy to create so it should be achievable by people of all levels of expertise with the software. We are going to use the upcoming section initially to find games where the home team typically win at home so all we need to do here is we need to select the home team win and at the same time we want to complement that by the away team's losses and give that a refresh. Now what we need to do next is we need to do the same again for the home and for the away teams and this time we're going to set it for the last eight games and we'll refresh that too. So this gives us both a long range view of how strong and weak a team is and also a more shorter term view of recent form. So for the back testing we're going to do it all for the last season, the 23-24 season. So I've set the uh, season at the top to 24 and as you can see at the bottom it is uh, going through 23,225 games and it's getting the data for that so you can see it's fairly quick for us. The next step is to add a custom column which will show the odds of the home team. We could do this from the filter section in the bottom left hand corner but we'll actually build it into our strategy template. This is one of the simpler custom functions too. All we need to do is take the home win odds and say that is less than or equal to 1.8. You can change the 1.8 to uh, any value that you want. If you wanted a more secure favourite you could maybe go 1.5, 1.6 but the choice is yours and we'll calculate that as well on the 23,200 games that we've got um, in the system so far and there we have it. So now we've got all the data that we need uh, we just need to choose our filter criteria for the strategy so what I'm going to set that to is 50% for the um, home wins for the season and also 50% or more than 50% for the away losses for the season and we'll do the same for the last 8 games so more than 50% home wins and more than 50% away losses and we also want to set the custom 1 filter which was our, uh, our boolean remember for the odds and we need to set that up to more than one, which is actually one. Uh, as it's a Boolean, a one is true and a zero is false. So basically, if the odds are under 1.8, then we get a one in there. And the last thing to do here is to apply these filters. And that gives us 2,196 games out of the 23,224 which meet the criteria that we have specified. So now we've got the games we need to take them into the advanced golf statistics module so we can do some back testing. So we'll send all 2196 games in. So now a quick look shows that 65.86% of the games are won by the home team in all of the games that we've brought through which is uh, it's not a bad place to be starting from. But we can now model our in-place situation so what we want is for the away team to be winning 1-0 at 20 minutes. And if we calculate on that, so you can see we've got C1, our condition 1, has 0-1, one, 
and we've got 20 minutes in there. So this has reduced the number of games down to 218. And the next thing we need to check is the goal sequence. So the first thing to check is that our logic is correct. And we'll do that by looking at the away team scoring first, which is 100% of the 218 games. And that is what we'd expect because we're looking at games here where we know the score is 1-0 to the away team after 20 minutes. What we are interested in is the 2-1 X market. So what that means is the away team has scored the first goal, then the home team scores the second goal in the game. And that has happened on 145 occasions out of the 218 games. So 66.51%. And that equates to odds of uh, 1.5 of there or thereabouts. And remember to add any commission into any calculations of um, break-even odds. So whether you're on 2% or 5% or any other number, be sure to factor that in to any numbers where you're looking to get your break-even figure. My strategy will be to cash out as soon as the home team have equalised, but depending on your risk appetite, as we can see here, uh, the 2 one, one which basically means the away team scored first and the home team scores the next two goals, happens on 85 occasions, which is 38.99% of all of these games. Or looking at it a different way, when the home team equalises um, out of 145 games, then 85 of these games then they go on to take the lead, which is 58.6% of this 145. So over half the time, you're going to see the home team take the lead when they go 1-0 down in, in the first 20 minutes. So now that we've proved that there's something in this strategy, we're going to run it again for today's games. Now, it's an international break, so there's very little football on, but we'll run it and uh, just see what uh, data we can get. So out of the games that are played today, then we can see we've only got nine selections here that um, will meet the criteria that we've set. As a reminder, our goal is if the home team goes 1-0 down after 20 minutes, then as soon as they equalise, we will cash out. If the score goes to 2-0 to the away team, then we'll cash out immediately for the loss. And if they're still 1-0 down at 80 minutes, we'll also take the loss. So we'll come back later on to see how these games actually did perform. For the second strategy, I gave AI free reign to come up with something. We're using Google Gemini Advanced for this test. And the prompt was, create me a unique football trading strategy, which I can then backtest for its efficiency. This needs to be a new made up strategy, either using the match markets or the overs and unders market. I didn't want it to regurgitate any existing strategy for this. Um, the results were quite thorough though. We've even got a strategy name here, the Comeback Kid. So expect to see this on other sites in coming weeks. Um, rather spookily, the strategy is quite similar to the one that we created in part one, even though we were always going to create that strategy regardless of uh, what the AI gave us here. So the fact that they are quite similar is uh, is interesting to say the least, but at least we can compare the two like for like a little bit more closely. In this strategy, we're looking for the home team and we're losing by one goal uh, between 60 and 75 minutes. It's also saying that the home team has done at least five shots on target and a higher corner account than the away team. And we need to observe the odds movement. And if the odds are shortening for the home team, despite being behind, it, it suggests growing market confidence in a comeback. Now, as we're only limited here, because we can use the same selection criteria as the previous game, we're not going to bother looking at the shots on target and the corners because the, the games are so limited, we'll leave ourselves with nothing. So we're just going to basically use the same criteria as before, where the home team have won more than 50% at home during the season and the last eight games, and where they're going to be a goal down at any score after 60 minutes, and we're going to stay in until 80 minutes, just to give us a little bit more of a window. We'll back test this again for the 23-24 season, as we did with the previous strategy, and see how the results are looking. So what we're going to do here then is we're going to put our C1 condition where the away team leads by one. So we're not actually specifying the score here. It's just uh, one goal, but it's 0-1, 1-2, 2-3. Mm. Um, we need that at 60 minutes. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the markets here between 61 and 80 because we're going to be getting out at 80 regardless so if we look at the goal sequences again we can see that uh, out of the 236 games where the away team led at 60 minutes 
then 50, say 53% had no goals at all in that 20 minute period and 80 games which is 33.9% the home team scored the first goal within that period which is what we're looking for here at odds of just under three so it seems as this is a higher risk strategy than the one that we created ourselves and as before we'll take this in play with this afternoon's games to see if we can get any games that meet this criteria and see if this is a profitable strategy or not. So out of the in-play games today, we only had two that hit the entry criteria, one for each strategy. For the first 20 minute strategy, Enfield took the lead away at Farnborough, who equalized on 42 minutes. So we can see here at um, 20 minutes, then the um, odds for Farnborough to win were 2.12. This is a low liquidity game, so there were gaps in the market. We may have been able to get a better price on this if we put in real money on, which we weren't. So we would have backed Farnborough to win at 2.12 or there or thereabouts after 20 minutes in the hope that they would have actually come back, which we know that they did do. And here we are uh, at 43 minutes, then we can see Farnborough's odds to win have dropped to 163. Again, there's a big gap in the market here with the lay odds of being 174. Um, so we weren't putting any real money on this, so the, the gap in the market didn't really bother us. It would have done if we were actually trading this game. But even if uh, we'd taken the 174 there, then we're looking at a potential 36 tick profits um, on this market in 23 minutes or so. And the other game that hit for us was the Doncaster Crew game in League Two. So as we see here, um, Crew took the lead after 56 minutes, giving them a 1-0 one, one lead at 60. So we backed Doncaster, or we would have done if we were using real money, and we can see the equaliser came at 73 minutes. So what we have here is Doncaster's odds to win at 6.8 uh, on 60 minutes, uh, with Crew being 1-0 up. And then when Doncaster equalised in the 73rd minute, then the odds uh, dropped to 2.96 and 3.05 again for the lay. So again, there was a little gap in the middle there, which you could potentially hope to exploit. And again, this would have been a win for us. The other games didn't actually hit our targets. So Gillingham versus Accrington, we can see the home team took the lead there. Uh, Accrington actually equalised on 60 minutes, but so as they weren't winning, that, that didn't meet our criteria. Uh, Wimbledon thrashed Carlisle. So absolutely no, that was nowhere near hitting 3-0 at half time. Uh, no nil in the Slovenian league. And Morecambe did take the lead, but it was in the 82nd minute there, which is far too late for our strategy rules. And in the Italian game, then again, it was 2-0 by half time. And that's how the game finished. Uh, the Brazilian game hasn't kicked off as yet, but um, you get the idea of how this strategy is playing out. So... I'm not going to actually cover that one in this video. But as we've only got two games that did hit, um, what we are going to do is we're going to look at how this strategy would have worked in all of the games that happened last weekend. What we've got here is all the games from last weekend which would have qualified for the criteria that we set earlier. And what we've got here is we've got the 20 minute strategy and we've got the 60 minute strategy. And as you can see, a lot of the games, again, haven't actually qualified um, for this because either there was no goals at all or the goal times didn't hit our qualifying periods. So we can see here that Cologne versus Erdogan uh, did hit the qualifying criteria and that would have resulted in a win. The Sofia game uh, would have been a loss. Uh, the Eredivisie game between Utrecht and Valdrijk uh, hit the 20 minutes. Uh, criteria. Wild Trike would have been winning in the first 20 minutes with Utrecht coming back. Uh, the Poznan game, um, that would have been a loss for us. Uh, the Sion Yverdon game would have been a loss. Uh, Bristol City Cardiff, a win. These are all on the 60 minute strategy. Beirut uh, would have been a loss. And the Jurgard and Kalmar game would have been a win on the 20 minute strategy. Even with the full program last week, we only had two games which um, met our criteria and then had the right in game conditions uh, to actually be a trade for us, um, which gives us three out of three with the one that we got today. And the 60 minute strategy, which again we said was a, a more high risk strategy, uh, only had two winners from six games last weekend. 
uh, giving us three out of seven, including the game we had this week. Obviously, it depends on the odds of these games, which we haven't got for the last week um, at the time when these uh, trades would have been placed. But the uh, the strategy that the AI came up with does seem to be uh, less reliant than the one we came up with. Um, now, it might be that we need to tweak these strategies to give a wider window. It's only 20 minutes for the AI-generated 60th minute entry point whereas our strategy is more of like an hour. It might be that we need to extend the windows on these, but uh, don't just do that on a whim. Uh, ensure you do all of your testing beforehand to make sure that it is the right thing to be doing. So with the small sample size, it's really impossible to say which strategy is the better. I mean, we've only got 10 games there over the two, which is nowhere near enough of a sample size. But the main purpose of this video was to demonstrate how CGM bets can be used to create two in-place strategies with one set of pre-match criteria and this was quite an easy setup and hopefully demonstrates that not everything needs to be complicated. It also shows as well uh, how easy it is to create strategies or at least the basis of a strategy using AI and I think this can certainly aid your trading um, but you need to be in control at all times. Never let the AI fully dictate what the terms of a trade are going to be. You need to be happy with your own rules and tweak them accordingly. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see similar content in the future, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't yet purchased CGM Bet and would like to have a go at creating your own strategies and scenarios, don't forget you can get 25% off the current price by using the link in the description below. Thank you for watching.